So we're here at Red Bull Studios in Los Angeles in Santa Monica with the chief engineer Eric Stemmen. Hey Eric. Hey. Um, I wanted to ask you what do you think or how would you define Santa Monica in the scheme of the music industry? I think um, when it comes to Los Angeles, Santa Monica is kind of the sleepy little uh, little brother to what most people think of as the industry center in Hollywood or you know there's a lot of recording studios out in Burbank, North Hollywood, those areas. Santa Monica has definitely had a handful of studios and has kind of done its thing, but it's you know a little a little breezier, a little slower over here perhaps. What year did the studio open up? Studio opened in September of 2007, so we're just over eight years in. Red Bull is pretty unique because it's not exactly a commercial facility. What makes it, uh, what would you say makes it unique? Uh, yeah, we definitely operate in our own little bubble. It's not a commercial endeavor, so it's more for just projects that we, you know, see as a good fit for us. Um, the studio is part of a larger network. There's 12 studios around the world. The program stretches from Los Angeles to New York, London, Copenhagen, brand new studio in Berlin, then all the way to Tokyo, down to Auckland, Cape Town. So uh, it's part of a bigger network, but it's, you know, this, this studio in particular is unique as far as I think anything built in the last 10 years, most studios aren't very large anymore. It's there, there's a lot more project studios and you, yeah. know, you can make a great record on a laptop now, but given the choice, it's great to get to come work in a big tracking room. And you know, we have the facilities where we can do a string, you know, string section or a rock band can play together live, that sort of thing. So you don't always find that in a lot of the kind of newer upstart studios. Yeah, it's an amazing space. The uh, the SSL is impressive. Um, what's your taking it back to young Eric? What's your first uh, memory of playing with music electronics? Uh, as sad as it was, my first piece of electronics was probably my PV bass amp that I plugged my Epiphone bass into and probably sounded pretty horrible, but that was my first time really of, uh, you know, taking a quarter inch jack, plugging it into something, trying to work some magic to get the best, you know, tone out of it that I could. Yeah. And you mentioned um, coming up through bands and this, that's kind of what led you here. Yeah, the just you know the, the the genesis of it all was just trying to make my band's demo tape sound better than it you know would have otherwise. Right, for sure. I think that's the case with a lot of people. Yeah. So I was talking to Isaac from AWOL Nation, and he mentioned to me that he really likes your mixes. He feels like they're powerful. That's how he described it. You have any secret sauce that nobody should know about that you want to say on camera? Uh, I guess the secret sauce would probably be just be too much compression, but too much hope, compression, but hopefully right? tamed in the right way. Uh, I found as I've gone deeper and deeper into this work, it's all about the master bus compression and just like yeah. squeezing every inch out of it, you know? And so, yeah, you know, you always just want to kind of maximize the zone you're working in. And I don't know when there's, you know, several tricks, but that's, that's, certainly, yeah, that's definitely a, that's a classic tool. Yeah. The, um, what kind of artists come through here mostly? Is it really varied or? It's, it's really all over the map. Um, you know, just kind of the current climate of music has definitely been hip hop and, mm -hmm. you know, EDM heavy, that sort of thing, you know, but we've done every type of music from, you know, punk rock to gangster rap to a DJ on his laptop working in Ableton, just plugged into the SSLs a big volume knob, oh, you no. know, to, uh, they keep me guessing, you know, string section one day, punk rock band the next day. So that's awesome. Do you yeah. know, are they mostly LA people or all over? No, we have a global global uh, clientele list, and sometimes just working within the Red Bull network, other territories will send us their artists that they're working with. So we'll work with, you know, I worked with this the winner of Polish Idol, mm -hmm. the equivalent of American Idol, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, got to work with. You know, somebody who's real hot in Poland that maybe, you know, a lot of people in, here in the west side of Los Angeles aren't familiar with. But yeah, in yeah. her, you know, in her market, she's blowing up. So, Say in terms of uh, professionals that you look up to, like uh, peers, recording engineers, who, what are a couple that you look up to? Um, you know, there's the, the names, I guess, they would register as far as, you know, my heroes over the years would be guys like Dave Sardi, Rich Costi. Of course, you know, someone like Rick Rubin, his name has been associated with so many records that I own in my collection, mm -hmm. you know, and so, um, yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, a lot of what uh, his, my kind of personal taste has been on the, you know, rock side of things, but, uh, you know, I definitely went through a big drum and bass phase where I loved like, you know, Ronnie Size and, you know, yeah, yeah. Ed Russian Optical and those type mm -hmm. of guys. So like, you know, throughout the years, 
I definitely try to pay attention to, you know, production, you know, across genres. And, you know, I think it's important to, in this job to, to have a sense of reference. If someone references a uh, Rihanna snare drum, you have to know it, but then you also have to know what the Black Flag snare drum sounded like. Definitely, you know? definitely. Yeah. How about um, how about artists? Was there an artist that came in that you have like a memorable or really inspiring experience with? Yeah, um, you know, you mentioned AWOL Nation. That's always one of my favorite things to work on. I've been very involved with both of their two albums. Um, one project that always stands out is this rock band from Ohio called Love Drug that I recorded a bunch of years ago. Uh, Michael Beinhorn was actually producing and I was engineering, so that was definitely a memorable experience working okay. both with a band that I had been a fan of ahead of time, but then also someone like a Michael Beinhorn who definitely has a lot of stories that follow him around. So that was fun to get to see his process as well. We're excited to, uh, thanks for letting us come to the studio. We're excited to get a demo and check it out. Yeah, no, I've um, been a big fan of the first two pieces of Maris Gear, so I can't wait to hear the reverb. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, so you can hear the tail. This is actually really good. Um, and then you can add in, inside both algorithms, you can add in um, octaves. Uh, and it's shifting yeah. within there. So you can, this is sub-octave. It says you know, minus oct. I hear some Blade Runner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then you can um, pull it up so it slightly pitch down. The slow, gradual, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, same, same concept, you do slight pitch up. So it like slowly pitches upwards. Fifth. And then uh, for all of these different pitch effects on the second layer, so if you hold this, you can adjust like the pitch mix. Mm -hmm. You can change, you know, how prominent it is in the sound. Um, let's try a third sound here. The other kind of like uh, background features is we have. Um, the vibrato, so you can pull them in alt mode. You can change how much vibrato you're adding to the sound. The same thing here with modulate. And it, it's, you know, it's kind of slowly drifting over time. Yeah. And then you can make that more exaggerated too. If you hold and get into alternate, you can make and change the speed. So this is like a lot of really fast modulated modulation added to the algorithm. You can dial that back down. Let's see. So immediately wow. like collapses the space. <laughs> yeah.